Welcome back. Oh, welcome back. Uh, our talk tonight is, uh, we've called it, uh, lovely, we've called it uh, Weave Bot. It's something that, that, uh, that we, we concocted uh, last Thursday. Uh, basically, we, we wanted to, to uh, do something kind of offensive. We, at the time, we didn't know that uh, DNS Cat was going be uh, was going to be covered, uh, and so we thought we'd, we'd do something something uh, well out of the realm for me. Nick Nick does offensive stuff every day, but uh, <clears throat> uh, we thought we'd we'd uh, we put together we'd put together a little uh, a little tool. Uh, before we get started, we'll let you know who we are. Uh, this is Nick Stark. Find him on Twitter uh, as, as Nick N Stark. He's got nothing to do with the shadow brokers, and I'm Tom Pohl. Nobody, nobody in particular is special, uh, and we're we're actually uh, regulars here at uh, at SecDSM. Uh, that we, we we participate a lot. We we encourage everyone else to like dig in and, and participate too, because it's it's a whole lot of fun. You get to learn a lot. Definitely join the Slack channel too if you haven't heard about it yet. But before we get before we begin our talk. There, uh, we didn't put any cats in our presentation. We, we actually forgot them. So if I, I need a little bit of audience participation from, from everybody that's got you know, a cell phone or a laptop. If you could go to nerdchills.com slash kittens, we'll wait. No, it's OK. It's OK. I know, I know, I know one guy that's going to trust me. Seriously, it's, it's totally legit. You'll be fine. Says Tom Pohl. So go to just nerdchills.com slash kittens. That'd be, that'd be awesome. And just keep it up the entire time. So if you get bored of me, you can look back at the kittens. OK? Thank you. Uh, so and, and I just want to let you know that we are releasing some tools today. Uh, so if you like free, free files, uh, send SKC. If you want to know NSTARC in your network, send SKC. If you want to write many words, big name for yourself, send SKC. That's the. Uh, sees Bitcoin kind of thing. So, oh, we're back. So, uh, Nick would like more money in his account over at, uh, over at, uh, at uh, SecKC. So, at any rate, so what, what issue, uh, so we get a look at sometimes at some bad uh, web applications. Uh, and and uh, sometimes web applications that go bad, uh, you can do nasty things to them. They're not coming back at all? Hold on. Uh, where basically, um, so we, we, it's actually not an Apple dongle, that's probably the problem. Um, so, did you watch a cat? Did it work? Did the kitties come up? All right, so, so we recently, we recently were looking at a web application that had, that had ID values. Uh, that apparently you could change the ID value at the end, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, and get at data that we probably shouldn't have been able to get at. Well, I didn't do it. Somebody else did. And so, and we thought, I wouldn't do that. Actually, that was, so that was kind of the premise, right? So we were, we were talking about, like, uh, like, that's not something I would do, right? Have you heard of this guy, Weave? Uh, that's why we named it WeaveBot, was because, uh, uh, a while back, uh, there's a guy named Weave uh, on the internet that uh, uh, he did that against AT&T. I think he maybe changed some other parameters too, but he basically, or he knew a guy that changed some parameters and basically got in trouble with, with, uh, with the FBI and got actually thrown in jail. And so, you know, it's like me, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to go to a website and twiddle IDs, you know, it's, it's all sorts of wrong. My wife would get mad at me and everything. Um, <clears throat> And so I thought, well, what if I could get somebody else to do that for me? Right? So what if, what if I could get, you know, like say I had a really popular website. Like if I could just get other people to go do, do the nasty thing and then just give that information to me. I thought that would be interesting. And then what if, you know, and then since this month's talks all about DNS, we thought we could, uh, we could, uh, uh, oh, yeah, there, here we go. So here's, uh, yeah. Uh, Oh, you can't see my slides. That's right. I'm sorry. Still nothing? So sorry. Much. Uh, so, uh, anyway, so. 
Still nothing? All right. We can go without. Oh. Oh yeah. No, we're good. But I just did something. There it goes. We're on here really. All right, well, <laughs> well, we can continue on too. So you, you don't need slides for, for where we're going. So uh, for, for <laughs> first of all, why are, so we're actually, re we are gonna release some, some stuff so you can play with this stuff and, and kind of explore on your own. And why are we doing that? You know, besides the fact that we're aspiring stunt hackers and we like lols, you know, it's important to be able to, you know, like, not everybody's going to see, you know, some of these bad things on your network, right? And so, you know, how can you find badness on your network if you've, if you've never seen the traffic? And so, you know, this is, you know, one more thing that, you know, that you can you, you do to yourselves so that you can help, you know, identify this kind of malicious traffic, right? Um, and so to talk about we bought, I'll uh, turn it over for Nick for, for the next few slides. Sure. So there's three parts to this. There's um, a web component that loads into the browser, and then there's an authoritative DNS server you're running somewhere out on the internet. Um, and then there's the, the scripts that you'll need to uh, extract the data from the output you get from um, the authoritative DNS server. Um, so the client-side script is not particularly complicated. It's only about 1.5 kilobytes. It's, um, what it does is once it's loaded, it generates a random ID in the range of I, um, IDs that you think you're going to enumerate over. So like, let's say there's 800,000 records in this database. You'll generate an ID between 1 and, and 800,000, and then you'll... Um, Within that target range, you'll you'll make a web request using uh, AJAX JavaScript on the client to, to to the resource with that ID, and then that will, if the, if the cores is misconfigured or its JSONP is enabled, you'll get data back from that target resource, and this is all on the this is all on the vulnerable um, browser, the other person's computer that we want to make them use or make them request the data. So they request the data, it gets into the browser, and then we need to send that data via DNS to our authoritative DNS server. So we, in, in the script that we wrote, we generated image tags with uh, an SRC, a source attribute that points to uh, the, the authoritative DNS server with a couple of pieces of data attached to it. Um, the first major piece of data is the actual data we want to exfiltrate. It's, that's about 60 characters long, hex encoded, and then uh, the second part is an identifier notifying you what part of the exfiltrated data you have. Um, the next part is the identifier you sent to the target so you know what record you pulled back. And then there's a session ID that's a... Yay! Should we go back a couple slides? Yeah. The problem. The, the show the issue. So, yeah. So this is what the, these the data we're talking about looks like. Like when you have an, uh, an integer identifier that goes up to a certain amount. Uh, let's get forward for me a couple. A couple more. One more. One more. Sorry. Okay. 
So this is what I, this, is, this is what the URL looks like. Um, and if you, can you hit the next slide for me? Um, this first chunk is the, so you have to break up the data. You can't send all of it at once, right? You can only have like 128 character long post name uh, or else DNS just like throws up and it says you can't do any longer. So we have to break the data up into chunks. So the first part is the chunk of data we want to send off to the remote network. Then here's the incremental ID that we sent to the target, the, no the chunk number, the, the sequence number of the data we're sending, and then this session identifier, which serves a couple purposes. It helps correlate um, user sessions, victim sessions, and it also helps with DNS uh, caching. So this will be unique uh, every time the page is loaded and the JavaScript is executed, but it's um, not changed when this, this uh, identifier is incremented. So after the data, after the chunked data is iterated through and sent to the DN, uh, DNS server, um, we increment this by one. And that's how we're planning on uh, getting all the data, or getting most of the data. So there's really no way of sending this number to the client by a DNS, and we don't want to run our own server because then that can be traced back to us. So we have to generate a random number that um, you know we use to uh, start the process. And hopefully, if we get enough people loading our malicious JavaScript, we should get most of the data set. Um, and that's really what we're looking for. We're not trying to get a com we're not going for completeness here. Just you know, general coverage. So the DNS response says this domain does not exist. And because of that, the browser doesn't actually request the image. So all that is requested by the browser is the DNS request. Um, so if you were trying to develop a way to catch this traffic, you wouldn't see like an additional web request made for an image or uh, resource served over HTTP. So there are some limitations to this. Uh, the same origin policy is a browser security measure that prohibits um, JavaScript from requesting resources that are not on the same domain or are not allowed um, explicitly by the access control allow origin header. Um, the other way around this is with JSONP support enabled. JSONP support is uh, basically you load a script that invokes a function passing the data to it and you just load it as a script tag. It's a way of getting around the the same origin policy. I'll show you an example of what that data looks like in just a moment. But what you need to keep in mind at this point is it's, it's loaded by a script. It's actually JavaScript that executes in the browser. Um, the last way you can possibly get around this is if you have an SOP bypass exploit, which they do exist. Um, they, they, people find them occasionally. Uh, they're worth a lot of money. Um, people pay a lot for those. So uh, if you have one of those, you could actually make web requests against any, any website on the internet instead of one that uh, implements the access control without origin header or has JSONP support. So that's the point I'm trying to make here, is you have to have access control allow origin header set to, or JSONP support enabled. And uh, J the access control allow origin header is would need to be set on the target server, the, tar the server you're sending the ID to to get the, to get the data off of, not the computer you're using to exfiltrate the DNS or via DNS. Um, and the value of that HTTP header would have to be star uh, or a domain you control, which is unlikely. People don't just randomly set the access control allow origin header to a random value, especially if it's some domain they don't know or don't trust. Um, it's just theoretically it's possible. This is what JSONP looks like. In the HTTP response body, you have a function that's invoked with the data passed to it. Um, and that's loaded into a script tag, like you do script src equals, and then the URL to, and that returns this piece of data. Or if you don't want to, or if you can't use the uh, chorus header or the JSONP header, you can use the JSONP proxy like any origin.com, which will make requests for you and return the data via JSONP. So theoretically, someone could use this service as a, as a means to proxy all that data before it's exfiltrated via DNS. Makes it kind of a risky service to run.
I'll turn it over to Tom. All right, so there's a, so you have to run, uh, so the, on the back end, we've got an authoritative DNS server. And uh, I actually, uh, in, in where you can log all the requests, I didn't want to run a full DNS server. I just have a, a little uh, box in Amazon that I had it spun up already. Uh, and so I, 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 wanted, I found a, a, a simple little Python script, like I s literally stole it from a dude on the internet, changed one line of code, and called it my own. So, uh, uh, so it, yeah, yeah, and we'll, we can share all these links later. But uh, ba basically, in his code, he had example.com, and uh, we, uh, we're going to use my, one of my personal domains, tompole.com, and we just made a subdomain zone called POC, or proof of concept. And then, uh, and then it's real easy just to start up. You say, hey, listen on you know, UDP and TCP port 53, and everything, all the requests and responses, just output it to a file. So that's basically all the back-end uh, infrastructure that we needed to get this thing going. So, uh, but now, once we got, can you still hear me? Yeah, once we got it going, uh, we had to actually make it, so uh, like I didn't want to modify tompole.com to send all my requests and like bring my blog down and all my other fun toys on the internet down. So I, I wanted a way to send traffic that ended in poc.tompole.com just to this one little VPS. So I did, uh, on, on my zone, I, I actually created, uh, I actually had a record already, I had, it was called Flying Shanahan. Uh, and so what I did was I said, hey, delegate the entire subdomain poc to this other host that I already had set up, this little uh, box in, 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 uh, in Amazon that I already had running. So that means that any request that ends in poc.tompole.com gets sent to this other server. And so I'm able to send a lot of traffic and still not mess with anything else. And this is actually kind of indicative of what bad guys will really do. So you'll see, uh, you know, bad guys in order to, uh, to uh, you know, get their, their garbage through to you, like if you're using a, in a service like Umbrella and so forth, is uh, uh, they'll go hijack somebody's GoDaddy account but they don't hijack it. What they do is they, if they can log into your GoDaddy account where you're managing your DNS, they'll insert a record, right? They'll, they'll insert a single host record so then they can, they can you know, host malware there or do other things. And I said, you know, gosh, you know, this isn't really that different except we're saying, hey, delegate an entire subdomain, right? So, you know, screw, screw uh, just doing one host name. I say, just delegate that entire subdomain to my bad guy server, right? Um, <clears throat> And, and, uh, and also, because of that one little line of code, it does answer. So if you do an NS lookup on poc.tompole.com, you get one result back, and that's, you know, local, or 127.001. Uh, and everything else just comes back. If you ask it a question, he'll say, no, that doesn't exist. That's not a thing. But you, so and so I'm, I'm literally, give, you know, you can request uh, questions, but all I, all I respond back with is, sorry, he, he doesn't live here. Uh, and so... Uh, this is what it looks like you know, once we start sending the image tags or sh stuffing the image tags in your browser. Is, uh, if, this is just, I apologize for the tiny print. We'll go, we'll, uh, I'll, uh, I got a demo here in a minute that we can bump up the, uh, the size of the, the uh, text. But basically, this is the output from the log file that we're generating. And you'll see here the host name, uh, just, like, uh, just like Nick was saying. Uh, that uh, and you can see that the, the 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 query and the response. You can even see the IP address. That's typically it'll be the IP address of their DNS provider. So you can tell if you're getting through like Open DNS or you're getting through coming through Google or whatever. You know it's leaking some of that information. So you can kind of get some indicators about you know the people that you're targeting, where they're coming from, or who their DNS providers are. Uh, and and so then. Uh, then on the back side, you know, like I said, this was a really dirty, dirty, like I think we spent a total of uh, an hour and a half, two hours putting this whole thing together. I think we spent five times as long putting the presentation together. Uh, and so I wrote some really dirty scripts to parse the log file because what, what happens is since we're chunking that data in DNS, is not, you know, it's, it's real time, but it doesn't necessarily all your requests come in in order. You know, we have to kind of reorder data, we gotta sort it out, it could be, you know, some browser implementations that we're looking at will send one request, some will send, you know, multiple requests for the same thing. You know, we need to kind of sort that and, 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 and pare it down so we only got 
the uh, you know the data once so that you know uh, we could assemble you know basically all those those packets of data back to get you know unique output. So um, so uh, I had just a couple little dirty scripts that that would first you know you could run it get all the IDs that we exfiltrated and then you can you can uh, feed it one ID uh, value and it'll out pop the the data that that came back. <clears throat> um, and now it's demo time. You guys excited? Yeah. All right. So uh, I may have to log into a box. Oh, I got a box logged in. All right. If somebody, oh, maybe oh, no, I got to re-log in. So right now, we're actually live, like anybody that's still on. Oh, yeah. So by the way, yeah, the nerdchills.com slash kittens, that's actually a domain I, 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 I own. Uh, and, and what that is is you're, you're actually, if, you, if you're on that site right now, you're participating in our botnet. So <laughs> congratulations. We're exfiltrating data. Not out anymore. Well, it's still coming through. I don't know who it is. Uh, but... Did you turn it off and back on again? Uh, so, so we're actually live exfiltrating data back to my server out on Amazon, and so, so if we, so we can say like get IDs and it's like look at all these. So like this was empty when we started, so so we've exfiltrated. So I can say okay, well show me that, you know that that this one particular ID, and we're like oh there it is. And so what we're doing is that the site that we were grabbing data from is an Ipsum lorem site that had a. a uh, a bake, yeah, oh, bacon, bacon ipsum, yeah, bacon ipsum that had a JSON P uh, content allow anybody to come get the data, kind of a, a request header, so that we could that our little proof of concept would work. <clears throat> uh, and so then we're basically, while you're watching the cat videos, we're exfiltrating the data from the ipsum lorem site back to my DNS server. And what's cool is that you aren't talking to me directly, right? You're only talking to your DNS server and your DNS server is sending that data to me. So we don't have a conversation. So you're getting the data for me from, from Ipsum Lorem and you're sending it to me but indirectly by way of a third party. That's a good question for an, for an FBI agent. Too bad we don't know any. <laughs> this is totes legit. I mean, this is potentially possible. I don't, we're not doing this for reals. Oh, oh, so yeah, we can actually, so we can actually, uh, uh, well, that's, what, well, that's what it looks like in plain text. So, so in my, uh, my get ID script, like I'm actually, like if we, if we, uh, look at that log, so, you know, this, this, uh, this is just like, this right here is like, uh, chunk number 46 of ID 814665. And so if I take, if I take this hex, what's it? That's your pin. <laughs> You know, one time I saw a leak of all PIN numbers, and I searched. Mine was in there. Yeah, it was from 0000 to 9999. I kid you not, mine was in. I freaked out. I changed the name of my cat and everything. <laughs> so, one, two, three, four, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so, that, so basically this file, you know, and so, uh, yeah, my output log were, were up to... Uh, what about 50, almost 50 meg worth of uh, exfiltrated data just by you guys sitting there and watching cat videos while, while we're talking. So, well, yeah, while I lied to you, sorry, I feel bad. Uh, it's all about intent. We're here to educate, right? It's intent. I heard that a lot, that it's all about intent. And my intent is just to have some fun. <laughs> I think that's okay. Maybe, I don't know. So, so, you know, so honestly, so this can't possibly work in the real world, right? We're, we're using a service that had, that intentionally had the, 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 the cores policy set to, and, you know, star, right? So I decided, well, let's identify, like, how big of a problem could this potentially be? Like, so I went to the, I went to the Oracle of all Oracles, I went to Shodan, and I said, hey, show me all the websites that even set access control uh, allow origin 
and it came back with one million uh, sites. So there's, okay, a potentially a million websites out there on the internet that could potentially have this issue. It just means like they had that set. Uh, but, you know, if you start looking, scrolling through the results, like a lot of them have star, right? And I'm like, why could that be? And then I got to thinking, you know, if you've ever done anything as a web developer in your past or present or, or someday you want to be a web developer, you'll learn that uh, sometimes stuff doesn't work. And you change stuff and you hack and hack and hack and then you get it to work. You did that one thing and it works and you're like, don't touch it, right? This is one of those things. I, I've been on, the, yeah, I've seen, I've seen developers like, they get here, they're like, they discover this cross origin thing because they're trying to do this thing between the domains or subdomains or something like that. They find this thing, it makes it work, and then they don't touch it. And I'm sure they add it to their, to their backlog of, uh, of, of things that they'll clean up sometime later in the future. And, you know, I'm sure it'll get cleaned up never. Um, so, so, there's potentially a million sites out there that are potentially vulnerable. Uh, and then I thought, you know, what about in Iowa though, right? Let's bring this back home. Like we're in Des Moines, Iowa. There's, you know, there's, this probably isn't a problem here, right? And it turns out there's in the state of Iowa, there's like another, the, of that million, there are like 1800 sites that actually, uh, and you know, the first several had access control origin or, or allow star. And then we start, I started looking at some of the other API services like API dot, GitHub. Actually, that's one you brought up, right? Uh, and, and intentionally, a lot of API services actually set access control allow origin to star intentionally because they want you to call their APIs from, from other locations. So this actually could, could be an issue that, you know, it's, it's good to bring it to light that, hey, we probably need to do some, some things to, to make this stuff better. Uh, but at any rate, uh, oh, back to Nick. So um, Ben did a really excellent job earlier talking about ways to detect this and, and possible mitigations. We're just going to talk briefly about that. Um, like, like Ben said, if an, if an end user machine on your network is making lots of requests and, or DNS requests and that's abnormal or doesn't really fit in with the rest of the data you have, um, you may be getting weave botted. Uh, if your web application has cross-site scripting issues, th this would be the primary attack vector um, is via cross-site scripting. You find a way to inject scripts persisted into a website, and then it's um, you know exfiltrating all that data to you. Um, and the last thing, if your web application has unauthenticated incremental IDs for sensitive resources, you know you're just you're you're a target. I mean, it's it, even if they don't use this method, someone you know is probably going to figure it out at some point and do something bad. Um, one of the things I was thinking about while we were doing this is that I, I didn't have any way of testing this, but like endpoint monitoring tools, how would they detect this? If they weren't looking at the DNS traffic specifically, all they would see is a Chrome process making DNS requests, which other than the number of requests being made, um, you know, might not be so abnormal. Uh, so I, I, I would love to see how endpoint monitoring tools you know, perform against this sort of attack. Uh, just a thought I had. Which leads into our next talk. I'm really excited because we, so the next talk is all about defense, right? So we actually captured some of this traffic and we gave it to Mr. TKIP back there and that's actually going to be the next slide, right? He's gonna come up and he's gonna talk about how can you detect this? And you know, is this easy? Is this hard? What does it take? So we're excited to hear his take on it. And uh, we want to thank you again for, for uh, putting up with our technical dif difficulties. But uh, yeah, it's Nick Stark, I'm Tom. And remember, every month, third Thursday of the month, here, SecDSM. So come back. Thank you.